Thank you very, very much for the introduction. I wish I could change my job like the Deputy Prime Minister. Just a few months into one and then promoted to the next. But I have been stuck here for the last four years and I'm counting my days. Well, this is the third ASEAN Business Forum. And I can see from Kun Pongsak, from Kun Gallin, from Kun Tewin, that this forum is becoming more and more substantive, more and more attractive, only because I think all of you feel that we are moving firmly toward the three pillars of the ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint. The first one, we would like to create one market out of this 10 economies and 600 million people. The second one, we want to be competitive. That's the main reason of coming together. That's the main reason of coming together back in 1992 for the first integration effort called AFTA. And then in 2003, the leaders thought, no, we have to create a community. And that community will create one market, one production base. This is in the face of the competition from East and West and from all over the global community. That if we don't build this one market production base. The interest, the attractiveness, the FDI would certainly go somewhere else where they could produce a better architecture for economic integration. So, one market, one production base. And it has to be competitive. All of us will have to move the scale of our industry, all the sectors of our economy, up different levels from labor intensive, producing raw materials and export as commodities unprocessed, no value add. And we have to infuse science, technology, and more sophisticated style and modality of management. Has to be competitive. The third one, these 10 countries are extremely diverse, particularly in economic development achievements. Kennedy once said, one house divided in the middle, rich and poor, cannot stand. ASEAN accepts the same advice. The new members of ASEAN and the old members of ASEAN must be able to be integrated seamlessly whenever that can be, but we have to work on it and that's called equitable development. That's why Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Brunei are extending our hands to our new members so that at some point 
we can integrate and we can tap into each other's strengths and dynamism and synergize working forward into the future. And the last pillar of our economic blueprint is to be able to engage with the world, to be able to connect with the global community seamlessly. Four simple goals, but extremely challenging for all of us. And as Deputy Prime Minister Kitirat said, yes, 600 million people, large enough, 10 times the Thai market. Yes, 10 economies rich enough in terms of resources and labor force and power of consumption. But definitely, if you compare this region with the world, we still need to interact with them, to draw them here, and to benefit from them, and to share with them. That's why ASEAN plus three, China, Japan, Korea, 12, 13 trillion US dollars GDP combined is another architecture for us. Because we want the market, we want the resources, we want the technology, we want the capital, and we want to become an integrated community of East Asia, also competing with the world. But that's not enough. India, Australia, New Zealand, another three will have to be brought in and in the ASEAN architecture, it's called ASEAN plus six, 15 trillion US dollars combined with higher per capita income across the board. And then this is the testimony of ASEAN attractiveness of East Asia attractiveness. The US and Russia came to join us in that forum called the East Asia Summit. 30 plus trillion US dollars combined. Three billion plus humanity. So we are working on this rather common sense architecture. But we want to make sure that we are connected and that we can synergize and that we can bring the energy of all these countries around us, important to us, to help propel our own economic development. And it seems to be going well, but we have challenges. We set our sight on 2015, and I can feel that in every member state of ASEAN, you are beating the drums of war just like now. That we know the challenges, but we are ready. In every member state, there would be this in Malaysia a few months ago, ASEAN Business Club, ABC, among powerful, young, active, proactive, I would say aggressive members of the ASEAN community, business community got together. From Brunei, for many, many years, ASEAN 100, under Timothy Ong, young, promising, wider perspective, higher horizon, willing to engage, looking outside of their own economies and their own countries. 
here in Thailand, I would hope that the younger generation would emerge, Kun Pong Sak. That this is a new challenge for a new generation. While the older, older generation have done a great deal, a great job to strengthen the Thai business community. But this is a new ball game. We need younger generation to stand up and to accept the challenge that 25% trade among ASEAN themselves, 10 countries, is still very low as a community. Out of 2 trillion plus trade, only 500 billion plus represent the trade between Thailand, Malaysia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Philippines, Vietnam, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar. Only 25%. No more than that. And it has been hovering at that level for some time. Now, as someone sitting trying to look at the landscape, trying to drive this project forward. I need your help. And if you look at that 25% figure, only three commodities are over 60% of that 25%. Automobile, rice, Electronic goods, rice is the traditional commodity of this region, no surprise. Electronics, technology, capital, management came from outside, use this as a production base and export from here. How much has ASEAN ourselves put in? This is a reality check. Different times, it can say a lot of rosy things about ASEAN, but you have to be realistic. And if you look at the automobiles, assembly. What part of the technology, what part of the intellectual property that is put into that? So 25% of commodities that are only represented by three commodities that do not represent intensive exchange between and among ASEAN. Compare to the NAFTA, 48, 50%, Mexico, the U.S., and Canada. Compared to the EU, 68, 70% among the 27 member states. So, we have to shift gears here. That's why the strategy is go to the SMEs. That's why the strategy is incubate, encourage, facilitate, give them support, low interest rate from the central banks down to the commercial banks, down to the export import bank, down to the BOIs, board of investments of every member state. From now on, cross borders, young men, young women, And on my travels between capitals, I have seen, I have met them. I am very encouraged. Not that we don't have them. For Thailand, young men and young women of SCGs, PTT, 
ban pu. I have yet to meet the executive of Siang Piao Iu. This is also setting its sight, a sniffer. This is also setting its sight on AEC. Its factory on La Prao Road is getting too small. It is moving out to somewhere in Ayutthaya, and I hope it won't be flooded. And the other day, I read about Hang Angkrit Kaya Trangu, a family business, small pharmaceutical, long, long time in establishment, also looking AEC. What I'm saying is this: I'm not saying that Kun Pramon, you you know, you have to retire. <laughs> Kun Pong Sak, you've been doing great. You have to retire. Make space for the younger generation. But the younger generation will have to stand up and say, ASEAN, the ASEAN economic community is for us. New skills, new vision, new expertise, new mindset. Malaysia has to grow outside of Malaysia. Thailand has to grow outside of Thailand. Singapore has been growing outside of Singapore for a few decades already. Indonesia has to do the same thing. All the rest of the ASEAN countries will have to do that. Otherwise, there won't be this one integrated market, one investment base. So, let's see if you can understand the logic of this evolution, and let's see if we can devise tools and strategies to catch up with this evolution. Our middle class is expanding. Our purchasing power is rising. And there is no other indicator that can confirm that, except the fact that 70-75% of FDI coming into ASEAN are going into the service sector. Because the middle class wants more quality, because the industries want more effective transport and logistics. And I have been told, for some reason, telecommunication industry here has achieved a high, high profit last year. When all others fail, why? Why telecommunication? I was told because the establishments, the business community realized that they need the ease of communication to do business, to transact, to consult, and to communicate with each other, rather than moving people here. All facts and figures can be sent outside or from outside in with full analysis, with full solid recommendation. You need the ease of telecommunication. So apparently every business establishment is going through its own refurbishment of its own telecommunication facilities. They are doing well in spite of everything last year. So, because this is expanding, because this is growing firmly and clearly, A lot of things still have to be done by the government and certainly by the private sector yourself 
all across ASEAN. Foreign investment law, how much are you going to open up for the service sector? Goods, we have been doing quite well, but the for the service sector, it's quite sensitive. But precisely because it's being guarded, it is attractive. And it can bring efficiency. It can bring technology. It can bring benefits. You can't close it down forever. And every negotiation for FTAs, this is a sensitive, sticky point. Because more and more of them are interested in that, because more and more our market is demanding that. But the laws, the mentality, the sense of security, ownership, we still want this sector to be protected. It won't be one market, it won't be one seamless, integrated investment base unless we have that connected. We came up with the master plan for ASEAN connectivity. Physical structure, rails, road, telecommunications, transport, ships, planes. Because you are not going to be one production market base and one investment area when you can't ship your products. You can't consume services from outside without being blocked or being taxed. If I want to consult a good hospital in Malaysia or in Singapore, that service is called consumption cross borders. It's not open, it's not wide enough. It's still being controlled and regulated. If I want to move myself into, and what they call, you can be present in this service sector, I want to invest in hospitals, I want to invest in schools, I want to invest in telecommunication. The presence of the operators in those markets are still very, very small. So, we know what we want, we know what the challenges are, and we know what the limitations are. I want you to be my allies. I want you to help. I want you to feel secure enough to compete, open up, and I want you to inform the government that yes, you too are willing to take that risk. Because you cannot be undercover forever. You cannot be behind the wall forever. If ASEAN does not open it, and it is only halfway open, WTO will open it, compete with the world. If the WTO is slow in opening it, globalization certainly will pierce into your markets, through your walls, no matter how thick, no matter how formidable. So, we have this problem all across, except one or two markets in ASEAN. But we have to fortified ourselves inside with our management skills, with our expertise, 
with the way in which we mobilize capital and fund for investment at the lower cost and with the connectivity with we have the best technology that we can bring in that is fortification of capacity not fortification of incapacity by erecting walls and moat to protect what's inside. It's a losing war. So, I hope that this challenge of ASEAN Economic Community 2015 will serve as a vision that we have to fix our gaze on it. At the same time, it will serve as an inspiration for all the senior business people, the middle level business people, the new and young energetic business people here in the landscape of ASEAN. And we need this kind of forum more and more in every economy. Yes, there is competition among us anywhere else. They have competition within themselves. But competition within a set of, under a set of transparent rules and regulations. I was so heartened to meet Do Ong San Suu Kyi last week, and she said, in 10 years, we will be competing with the rest of ASEAN. I said, Amen, Madam. But that wish means she is going to be inside, working from inside. That wish means she's confident. That wish means she will contribute to national reconciliation if she is allowed to. And that will be another dynamic engine that would come through ASEAN. With the resources, with the market, with the stability that would come, it would be another attractive new star in the sky, in the constellation of this East Asia region. But what we have to be careful about is all the excitement about Myanmar. Let's hope that it is excited because Myanmar is part of ASEAN, not Myanmar as an individual standing outside of ASEAN. And the leadership knows that. So with the inclusion and integration effective integration with ASEAN, one issue is going to be removed from our interaction and our dialogue, our conversations, our cooperation with the larger players that I have mentioned, the EU, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, the US, the UN, China, Korea. The ease of doing business with ASEAN, the ease of strategizing together with ASEAN, because East Asia has become a new center of growth. Acknowledged, acknowledged. Through this journey, we have been able to bring in major powers
to connect with us. Our beginning is opposite, opposite to what the European Union began. The European Union began with major economies on functional cooperation, steel and coal. France and Germany. Our ASEAN began with small and medium-sized countries, humble, threatening none, welcoming all. But through the years, we have been able to bring in China, India, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Russia, the EU. That's the reverse process of creating an open regionalism here. And we are quite certain that we are on the right road and that our strategy is effective and is producing results. So, those of you who came from outside, welcome. This is an open space. In fact, let me say that all the rules and regulations that we have brought down, the barriers that we have brought down, the tariffs that we have done away with, the multinational corporations coming from outside are taking more advantage of them than the ASEAN national companies and national SMEs themselves. We have nothing against that. Open is open. But the point is, we want to build this house for the entrepreneurs, for the business sector, business community of ASEAN too. When major automobile company from Bangkok comes to see me in Jakarta and said, as of the 1st of January 2010, we export more ready-built unit, completely built unit, we import more parts from all over ASEAN because we benefit from your tariffs being brought down. First, of January 2010. Again, I said, Amen. Can you make that a headline in all business papers, not only in ASEAN, but international? That after all, you have changed your mind that ASEAN is not just a talk shop, that we deliver. And I'm sure many other multinational corporations are benefiting the same. I understand that AIG has already changed its Southeast Asian department into ASEAN department. I understand Sawarovsky coming here looking at the potential of AEC for the ladies. I understand that many, many multinational corporations are coming here positioning themselves for that. Welcome. But I hope that the multinational companies themselves are also going to be instruments of integration for us too. That you have all these personnel around the region, that you have very strong legal department looking into the intricacies of our laws, our regulations, our rules, and you can take advantage of them. The rules of origin, what is being produced where, with what percentage of raw materials from that country, or only labor from that country. You have mastered all these things that we have put up. But I hope along the way, when you see this market growing, expanding, and you make profit out of it, 
that you will also make contribution, helping them, helping us to integrate more by nurturing, by incubating, by encouraging, by bringing them to each other. That's what we did with the European Union, U European ASEAN Business Summit last May in Jakarta. To begin with, the question was, how are we going to encourage ASEAN nationals to come? And we said, begin with your own companies. Begin with your own partners. Begin with your own uh, affiliates. Who are your distributors? You are not distributing these products yourself. You have sales department. You have delegated these things to locals. Encourage them to come. Encourage them to interact. Let them see the landscape. Let them realize the potentiality. Let them know that you are benefiting from this landscape. So let's hope that multinational corporations from outside, EU, Japan, China, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Canada, Russia, Korea, coming here not just to grow outside of your own economies, but to help those economies that you are investing in, you are producing in, you are distributing from, also benefit from your presence, your expertise, the way in which you do business, the way in which you manage your business, the way in which you structure your business. So I hope a meeting like this is a place where you don't only match who is going to sell what for whom, who is going to buy what from whom, but it is also an opportunity to dialogue on the larger picture of the region. Don't lose the forest for the trees. Because each and every one of us is going to look for partners, make profits, but little contribution into the evolution and the growth and the maturity of that market. The rule of law, transparency, accountability, sustainability, all these golden rules for businesses to succeed, that set of values must also be exchanged and be conversed and be dialogued among us and among you. So that together, the first Leo to attract you here of course, there's the possibility of profit. But once you are here, you are a rightful part and member of this community. And let us hope that the way in which business is being conducted is being raised to a standard that we can, the last objective of ASEAN economic community is to be integrated seamlessly into the world trading system, economic landscape. That will not happen if those of you who are here are standing in isolation, invest, making profit, and go home. But you take it as your mission. that we will learn together, that we will help each other, that we will mutually supporting each other. 
that we are not going to look for trees to be cut, but also growing the forest together. This forest of opportunities, this forest of potentiality, this forest, yes, of profit will be sustainable. So, the house of ASEAN is built for all. First, to help ASEAN, 600 million, 10 economies, put their acts, put our acts together. But it is an open house for those who have goodwill and who have good faith come and participate in this project of hope into the future together. And I think if we combine our efforts, if we work together, if we contribute to each other, it is going to be a beautiful house. Prosperous, stable, secure, very attractive. And that will be a great contribution to the global community itself not forgetting that ASEAN is in the middle of that East Asian integration and evolution that is going on. You are in the heart of it. Make the best of it. Thank you very much.